They're so pretty. Look across the street. Turn in. Look at that. Donkeys and horses. Very cute sign. This is where we're going to stay for the evening. Went in here earlier and met a really nice fella named Kevin who directed us over to our, uh, our parking gigs for the evening. And this is pretty cool. And we swing around, they actually have a little place right there that you can get some eggs. <laughs> Farm kiosk. Hey, we're right on Walapa Bay. Beautiful property here, you can see. They've got solar, they got all their composting over here goats, roosters, and chickens over here on the right. Yeah, this is a farm to kitchen when the season's here. Oh, all the goats went goats. In for the evening. <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> oh my god, cute. And it's some baby ones. They said they had twins. Oh, I'll have to look. Yeah. Very nice. We'll have that breeze coming right off. It's nice and cool for the evening. This area, and that is Walapa Bay. It is beautiful. Hey, what you got going, Shell? Nice. Shell's getting us some heat going. Uh, turning on the propane tanks. She's going to kick the trim assist them on. Tallulah's her little uh, helper. Which is uh, always nice. All right. Okay. We're going to go take a little tour. T, we're going to go see some goats. Oh. oh my gosh, these are fabulous. <laughs> I never fed a, felt it one of the hoods. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, that's a nice Shoo, hi, hi. Yeah. Oh my goodness. What a treat. Oh, really? Hi. Do you want to hold her? Sure. Oh, Lulu. Oh, Lulu. So we call her. Haley's daughter as well, and she's a year old. Oh, okay. Oh, but, uh, Let's see you, Lulu. Hello. Oh my goodness. Oh, uh, look at her. Look at that. Yes, you're a movie oh, star, aren't you? Oh my God. Really? Okay. It's going to be part of the future vineyard. The property line's pretty big. Cam's giving us a tour. Look at all these chickens. Free range as possible. Right. Beautiful. You can only do so much when you live next to the bears. Yeah. We're gonna come back when we can get some rainbow eggs. It's an olive egg. Those are nice looking eggs. Smallest chicken in the world. Look at they are cute. Cam is <laughs> going. Get some. Oh, cute! Oh, what a trip. They're almost see-through or something, are they? Or transparent, whatever yeah, the word is. These are Sarama chicken eggs. Wow. wow. Absolutely tiny. It's like a ping pong ball. Those are cute. Are like Hi, Timmy. Nice You're cute. He's very soft. Oh. Can I pet him? Yeah, I'll pet him. Timmy. Oh, my Absolutely. gosh. Soft, huh? Holy mackerel. I never petted a rabbit that yeah. So, we were told that we could go and hold the baby goats before we go to bed tonight. Yep. And we got all the rooms. Yes. We could not resist. This amazing opportunity. Be right back, Bad Betty. We're gonna go hold some baby goats before we go to bed. Just gotta make sure we shut the door behind us so they don't escape. Oh, nothing else comes in. Oh my god. Hi guys. Hi, Hi y'all. <laughs> We're back. Yes. Oh, there's little Lulu waiting for me. Hi, Lulu. So you just want to eat my coat up, don't you? This is like heaven. Bye guys. Bye guys. Good night. So that was fun. Beautiful morning. We're out here at the Walapa Bay Harvest House Campground.
We're making you guys some food, some soup, breakfast, lunch. <laughs> She loves her dad, yeah. huh? We are prepping the feed. It's a uh, dairy goat. Right here. Oh, dairy goat, yeah. And then there's a small white plastic cup. That one there. Fill that one and put one scoop in each of those. Two. And then there's two Rosie. Will be, so. <clears throat> Zoe, share with April. There you go. <laughs> and let me get. Oh yeah, you just want some milk, don't you? All right, I'm gonna get gloves on because we have a rule in the barn, you never touch the hay without gloves on. Oh, okay. Because Farmer Dub got a gut head thistle in my middle finger and I almost died. Oh really? my gosh. Wow. Yeah, it developed uh, sepsis. I got what they call flexor sinotinovitis. Oh my gosh. I couldn't move the middle finger at all. It was terrible. I was in the so hospital was just stuck week. in that position. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was really fun. I'm not being mean. That's what it was. Wow. And I was in the hospital for almost a week uh, on IV antibiotics. Wow. Vancomycin and rocephin. Like I said, I almost died. Wow. So I'm sitting there going, oh, this is kind of interesting. Okay. And the fact that it was goat head thistle, like right. revenge of the goat or something. What's that? So, jeez. So, where are you? <laughs> So we're giving them some food. These are all the males. Oh, okay. That one there. He had a really big head. He was almost stuck. Oh. I got him out for her. Hi guys. <laughs> and it smells like on. goat cheese here. It really does, right here. Oh, that's <laughs> Do you smell fascinating. it? Fascinating. Yeah. Well, we keep the boys separate so the goat cheese tastes sweeter. Okay. Really? <laughs> that's why we don't have them. Oh, what are you saying nice. these males are sour? <laughs> they are. <so> <laughs> you guys are uh, hungry, aren't you? Yeah, you gotta wait. You gotta yeah. wait. Besides keeping the boys separated, because what they they're still in rut season right now, so what they do is they urinate on their beards because that is really attractive to females. Oh, not so much to us humans. Yeah. Um, yeah. And. Uh, the Nigerian dwarf, this is Luigi Sr. Oh. He's in rut, he could be in rut all year round if he gets a, a pheromone cue from his ladies. Oh. Pinto too is a mini Nubian. Their rut oh. season is more August-ish right. to January-ish. Okay. But he's still been kind of uh, uh, sowing his wild oats here. <laughs> he's so, got what you gotta um, do, Tonto. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing that we can do to keep the goat cheese from being goaty is you remove heat from the process. So we milk. We put it immediately in the refrigerator. We milk the second girl, we filter it, put it back into that, put it in the refrigerator. We also, when we're pasteurizing the milk, we take the temperature down really quickly. We have uh, legally like four hours to get it to 40 degrees. We do it in less than an hour. Wow. wow. And that helps, and we've just found over time, makes the milk so sweet and the Ooh. cheese so sweet. Oh, People <laughs> Yum. who eat goat cheese, love our goat cheese. People who love goat cheese, Love we really love yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's really nice that we have. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> they know. So I'll put the first one down there. All right. They'll start doing the grain dance here. Put it down. <laughs> All right, there you go. Put the second one down there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All corners. Huh? The third one is here. Oh. Yep. And the fourth one goes there. Oh my gosh. You God. guys know what's going on. Oh, they do. <laughs> Michelle's doing go KP duty. <laughs> <laughs> Say hi, Michelle. <laughs> yeah, there's Dan. <laughs> there we go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So when you hobble, have to hobble a goat to keep them from kicking over the milk. We have a head restraint and we have leg restraints. When we want to release them, which do we do first and why? I'm gonna leg go. Leg release. Okay, Final answer. answer. <laughs> I like the, the feet because that's what came in. Okay. 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 Well, actually. That's all good, and I like the logic of this way. Guys, I have everyone explain the logic. You take these off first because if you don't, when you release the head restraint, she oh. will literally kick this stand all the way. It's happened to each of us. She's wow. all the way to the door. Drag to the door of the gate. Yes. Wow. I'm not going to recreate it here. Just yeah. trust me on this I one because you. it is very. I mean, because they are such um, a highly predated animal. 
because they're so tasty, they have very strong survival instincts. Okay. When they feel restrained or whatever, feel threatened, it just naturally goes into that fear of flight, you know, fear of flight sort of thing. Yeah. So we will not take this off first. So you are correct, we'll Michelle. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah, there's 75,000 daffodils that come up and they're already starting to poke up seeds. Oh, yeah. But they'll be blooming in late March, mid to late March, and they go through April. Daffodil so, drive. Curly kale, and then that's some uh, Russian kale. And some more kale over there. So right now we're between seasons. Sure, yeah. These are all rhubarb. We'll be planting the rest of these. So we have our clippers. That's gorgeous. And we are going to pick some herbs here. And it is February. February, so hey. Okay. Yep. So we've had fun. Yes, we did. The owner is a wonderful Yeah, lady. she's amazing. Yeah, I think I've learned more from her than I've learned in a lot of things. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Most of my life. Mm-hmm. How fun. This little smell it. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, you talked to that. <laughs> wow. Curly kale. All right, Curly. Just a little clipping. There we go. All right. Where are you headed, Shell? But they are starting to pop up. Look, she said there's over 75,000 daffodils that line this driveway. That's going to be beautiful. I can't wait to come back. So as you approach into the drive, you would make the left. It's a shared driveway simply beautiful grounds roadie road. Road, road this is the composting area everything you see right here so see shell there in the distance she's actually just walking alongside the solar panels now i'm going to tell you what i find fascinating about this we have about 21 kilowatts of hours that are going to be produced from these panels here as deb was sharing but more uniquely, if you look here where Michelle's standing just off to the side, you're gonna probably pick up and notice that these are all oyster shells. And given that we're just outside of Wallapa Bay, right over there, and if I remember correctly, it's one of the world's largest producing oyster bays. Uh, and uh, these shells, getting back to what we're talking about, are actually gonna reflect the light back up to the panels. So rather than it just be drained or absorbed into uh, the ground, if you will, this reflection, if you will, is gonna re-energize these panels. And the theory is about 20, 25% more power will be gained just from that. So they're experimenting with that. I'm pretty excited to talk to Deb as things grow and continue on and learn more about how that's happening and what's going on there. But another great utilization of a natural resource to capture the sun and produce additional energy through the solar panel, so very cool. Bad Betty hiding back here. She had a good stay at the Heritage Farm. Can't wait to come back in the spring. Well, y'all, Jason Michelle here about to close out Echo Nesters for the day here at one of the most beautiful Harvest Host spots we've ever been to, completely unexpected the journey. You saw us go through the people we met, our hats go off to Deb, Farmer Deb, Farmer Deb. and her staff, Shelby Fabulous. and Cam and Kevin, and just a gorgeous property. I'm gonna do my best to swing you around. This is where Bad Betty was nestled in for the evening, literally steps away from Wallapa Bay on one of the most beautiful properties, a farm, very sustainable. As you saw in the video, there's just so much to learn and discover here. So if you're between Long Beach and Ocean Park, I say stop by here, meet the staff, have a visit, and especially when spring and summer comes, I guess this is just phenomenal. We're gonna be back. We're gonna do a follow-up video on it. So for now, see you all. Thanks for joining us. Happy travels. Cheers. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.